today I want to show you the camera that I'm carrying around. I'm gonna be sweaty because it's 35 degrees, I'm in the sun and I found a spot with the least amount of wind. The camera I'm carrying around is from Blackmagic. It's the Pocket 4K, so it's the cheapest of the Pocket's cameras. The main reason why I chose this camera is it shoots raw. That is the reason why. And when you start shooting raw, there's no way back. Like there is a time before raw and after raw. Before I was shooting raw, I would always like look at the new mirrorless camera reviews and all that. I don't care at all now. Because these cameras for me is not interesting at all. That is why I chose this camera because it was the cheapest and smallest raw capable camera. I'm gonna show you the outside of the camera using this one, it's a GH5. And already now I have to think into the future of which color temperature and all that kind of stuff. Because you cannot change that afterwards. You can tweak it a tiny bit, but with raw, it doesn't matter. Let me show you the setup and then we talk a little bit about how it is. Okay, let me see if I even remember how to film on this one. It's a little bit DIY like, which is amazing. I like building stuff like that. Got sweat in my eye. Let's start in the front of the camera here with my ND filter. If you don't know what an ND filter is, it's like sunglasses for your camera. The ND filling I'm using actually in front of the lens is a drop-in filter from Breakthrough Filter. Amazing filter. I used to have that on my red Komodo. So what I did is, and <laughs> see if I can film this, and talk at the same time. So what I did was, there is this shade thing, I actually can't remember what it's called, and I kind of curved it in and slide it in and then just glued the filter in. It's a variable filter, so I can adjust like how dimmed everything should be. The lens itself, it's a Lauer lens, 10 millimeter. I think they call it Zero D, Dreamer, it even says there. And the zero D means there's no distortion. So everything at the edges is processed. So instead of being bendy, it's straight. The lens is really, really nice. It has some fallbacks. It's super sensitive to light on an angle into the lens and it kind of wash out the image. Really annoying. It doesn't have that much of a character to it. But other than that, it's super, super nice. It's a manual focus lens. So when I have to focus for infinity, I just like slide it. I don't have to think about anything like after a meter. So it's only within a meter, I have to do the focus properly. So everything that's further away than a meter, I'll just twist it and then I don't have to think about it. Okay, let's go to the audio section over here. The audio is a Rode mic. Pro Plus something. The nice thing about that microphone is it turns on and on itself. So it uses battery, which by the way lasts forever. So when I turn on the camera, the mic turns on on itself. So I don't never have to think about any of that. I have the microphone loose, so when I am on this side of the camera, I will move it this way. If I'm on the other side of the camera, I will move it this way. It also spins all the way back. So when I'm walking, filming this direction, the mic is facing straight up to my mouth. So that's why the audio most of the time sounds very studio-like because I always make sure to have, like that, to have the microphone straight into my face. For the screen, this is a, what is that called? Arton, 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 Arton. I don't remember. I only use that screen to pull focus and then do the framing, of course. I do nothing with exposure and all that. That comes down to shooting raw again because you, like, it doesn't matter. The way I do it is I'll just shoot with as much light as possible and then I'll bring it down on the computer. I can show you here, like this is how it actually exposed and this here, this is how I brought it back down because it's raw. So the only thing I'm worrying about when I'm filming is focus, framing, and then I just make sure to go all the way up to I clip the image and then bring the exposure a tiny bit down. And that's it. 
That's it. So easy. Everything else I deal with in the computer way after I shot everything. And again, there is this time before you shoot raw and after you shoot raw. It's the same with settings on the camera. A cinema camera, camera, <laughs> a cinema camera like this, there's, you don't worry about the settings. So I just shoot in the best constant quality because it's 4K, so it's relatively small file sizes. But everything else about settings, like if you look at some of the Sony cameras or Canon cameras on YouTube, there will be a bunch of videos about, oh, this is the best setting for this camera. This is the best setting for this camera. There is no settings to worry about with a cinema camera at all because all the creative work is done in the computer where it's supposed to do. Like out in the real world where you're shooting, you should not worry about the creative touch of anything. Just make sure that what you're getting is enough. Okay, this is all my opinion and I'm no expert at all, but I will never go back. Okay, I'm super happy with this setup. Probably gonna buy a red Revaptor X whenever I have the money for it. It's gonna be like five times the weight of this camera. It is super light, this little setup, for what it is. Okay, on to the media I'm shooting on. I shoot straight on hard drives, so I just plug them in. I have two Samsung hard drives, a T5 and a T7. So the T5 is the faster one, but it works great with the slower one for 4K also. The only thing with the slower one is it sometimes takes a little bit longer to boot up when you boot up the camera. Other than that, it works perfectly. I'm probably forgetting all kinds of stuff. Okay, tripod. So this is a Cironi, Cironi, Cironi. I don't know how to say it. It's a carbon fiber tripod. It's relatively cheap. I think it's two or three hundred dollars. And for the price, it's really good. Really, really good. I feel like there was more that I wanted to tell you about with this. What you will see a lot of people when you talk about this camera, they will be very concerned about the battery life. I just have the screen on the camera all the way turned down. I never use it unless it's at night, I can use it. I have six batteries and I maximum used four so far. And that will be a full day of shooting. And sometimes it will be almost three hours of shooting on four batteries. So as long as you don't use the rear screen, you're all good. I completely forgot. There is a case from Small Rigged where I rigged everything too. So all the cables and everything is like attached to that. And it works quite well. I was about to get the full case, but then I saw the half case and I was like, less weight. And then it's actually really nice that I can grip the camera on the side also. A little bit more about the screen. I DIY this top part of it because <laughs> I don't know why the engineers wouldn't do that. There are some ventilation vents on two on the top and one in the bottom. And at some point I realized that there normally there will be some kind of foam or something. So if any kind of water will drip in, it doesn't go all the way into the screen. It's not there. I don't know if that's a standard thing or it's just my screen missing it. So I engineered this little part on top of the screen. It's the tag they put on the suitcase in the airport. So that was the tag that was on my suitcase. The great thing about that is laminated. So it's like some kind of waterproof. Plus there's actually a little bit of glue inside it. So it was perfect. It glued on top and then I put a little bit of tape on the corners, just took a marker and then painted it black. So now I have a little rain cover. For me, when I'm sweating on the camera or I'm walking under somewhere, especially in Bangkok or something bigger city like that, where they have a lot of air condition like dripping all the time, then I don't have to worry about that. If you have a big drop hitting that wind going into the screen, it will die. That was some of the first stuff I made was make sure that I have that part covered up. So that's kind of the one more little DIY thing I did for this camera. My opinion about this camera is for the price you pay for the camera and what you get, this is the best camera in the world. And there will be hundreds of thousands of opinions about that. But this is my opinion because it shoots raw. And that's what it's all about. 
it shoots raw. It's funny because I see a lot of people with Sony cameras and they're great, but at the same time they're photographers, but they will never shoot their pictures in JPEG. Like, why would you not film in RAW then? I don't understand it. One more time, if you start shooting RAW, like, you can't go back. It's not possible to go back. I will buy a red again when I have the money. It's way over my budget right now. But this little camera is so amazing and I'm super happy about it. I spent 20 years in the music business as a sound engineer. One thing I hated back then was when the equipment limit my work and shooting raw is not limiting my work. Like I don't walk into a shopping mall sitting in a car with tinted windows. I don't have to worry about it. I'll just change the white balance or the tint afterwards. This camera does limit what I can do with it, but for the price of it, it doesn't like if you know what I mean. But the most important thing, and I said it a million times, the raw capability. For the audio also, I have the microphone and then it has like scratch microphones on the camera itself. So I have one channel, there is the main, and then I have another channel, there's the ones on the camera. I never use the ones on the camera, but I have it as a backup in case something happens with the mic. That was my little setup. I'm probably gonna do one more of it in the future when it expands so I change something. I'll do a more in the tour of the computer I'm carrying around and probably what I'm doing in the editing software in a later video at some point. I didn't clean the camera because I wanted you to see how it mostly look. Like it's always kind of dusty and dirty. That was a little tour of my little setup I'm carrying around. Another great thing about this camera is people actually recognize it. So people will be like, oh, we saw you yesterday walking there and there because they pay attention to the camera and nobody walks around with anything like that. Another thing is people would come and ask me about it and I will tell them what I'm doing and then they will give me suggestions to go there or go there. It's a nice little way to start a conversation. It is a big camera to carrying around, but I'm so used to it now that I don't even think about it. And the benefits of having so a big camera is so much more than having a smaller one that you can't do what you can do with this camera. I hope you enjoyed this little tour. If you have any questions of any kind, just leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them. There's only one thing to say. Remember to shoot your videos in RAW. See you in the next one where I'm going to a huge temple just nearby.